Hey, welcome to part two, uh, having a look at the characters and then the places. Um, so we're up to Orlando and Adam. Um, okay, Adam being a servant who has served the family for years and years and years. I think it's like four score and ten, which makes him about a thousand years old. Okay, um, so I suppose the first sign of, of belonging and loyalty from Adam is that he approaches Orlando and says, your brother Oliver is planning on killing you tonight. Um, how about you leave? Orlando's like, dude, I can't leave. I've got no cash. Adam offers, I have 500 crowns. Okay. Um, certainly follows that up with the sentence, I will follow thee to the last gasp with truth and loyalty. All right. So Adam sees the good in people, knows Orlando's the good dude, and will head off with him. Now, we know that when they get to the forest, um, Adam being old um, and, and hungry is basically lying down ready to die. Orlando charges around looking for food everywhere. And, and once gets the offer of food, says, hang on, I've got to go and get Adam. And he uses this wonderful simile of, like a doe, I go find my fawn. Okay, which which shows the, the turnaround in the relationship, but, but still a sense of belonging. Initially, Adam comes to help Orlando and is like a father figure. Uh, and then Orlando goes and helps Adam um, like a mother, like a doe, I go find my fawn. So it's very pretty. Alrighty. Um, Orlando and Rosalind, they certainly find a sense of belonging, they are in love, there is nothing that can keep them apart. You've got all of uh, Orlando being banished and, and basically writing letters on trees and all sorts of shenanigans going on. Um, all you need to do, uh, put into Dr. Google, Rosalind Orlando quotes, you'll find a thousand quotes there, but a couple of simple ones. When she first uh, talks about seeing Orlando, she mentions him as my child's father. That, so that's... That's a really big step straight away that shows how just in love and how much she wants to be with him. Okay, um, in the marriage scene where Rosalind is marrying Orlando, uh, she says twice in a row, to you I give myself for I am yours. She says this to her father, Duke Senior, and also to Orlando. So it certainly suggests that you know she feels very much uh, positively about Orlando. Now, just quickly on, on places, um, court versus the forest. Um, now this is juxtaposed to really to illustrate the idea of the pastoral genre. Okay, and you've got to talk about genre within this, especially when you're talking about place. Okay, the the idea of the pastoral genre is that uh, you know nature and um, farms and and rural life is a wonderful, great thing, and this is certainly emphasised. And Shakespeare juxtaposes this with the court being hostile and corrupt and full of political intrigue. Um, certainly, uh, the forest is, is very symbolic. It's called Arden, very similar word to Eden. Um, and, you know, to emphasize that it's, it's this pure, uh, lovely place. Okay, um, so in the forest, when we're initially introduced to it, that is in uh, Act 2, Scene 1 with Duke Senior. That certainly should have a capital S, but that's cool. Um, Hath not old custom made this life more sweet than painted pomp? Okay, so you've got the, the assonance there, or whichever one it is, of painted pomp. Okay, that refers to the court. It's very negative. You know, the, the idea of painted means that you have to dress up for it. It's, you know, highlights that it's a place of corruption and intrigue and, and, and not being the, the, the person that you should be being. Okay, um, to further highlight this, are not these woods more free from peril than the envious court? Okay, so very, um, you know, juxtaposing exactly what Shakespeare was, was doing. And he certainly re refers to himself and all of the, the people hanging around him as brothers in exile. Okay, and the idea of brothers certainly highlights that sense of, of belonging there within the forest. Uh, to to emphasise the idea of a forest versus um, court. Uh, Duke uh, Ferdinand um, is, is basically highlighting um, how different it can be for the two girls if they are separated to Celia and they will show more bright and seem more virtuous when she is gone once we get rid of Rosalind. Um, Rosalind's reason for being banished, thou art thy father's daughter, that's enough. Um, and, and even Orlando, um, I would I would I would thou hadst been some son to some man else. I wish you were someone else's son. So there's a lot of real negativity that, that Shakespeare highlights in the court, and that's all coming from Duke Frederick. Okay, just our last little dude um, is, is our, our 
our little Jacques. Okay, um, the repetition throughout the whole play of Melancholy Jacques. Um, so to your pleasures, I am for other than for dancing measures. You guys go have your fun. This is at a wedding, Act 5, Scene 4. I'm not going to have my fun. I, that's, that's not what I do. I'm not that kind of person. All right, another quote. Um, I can suck melancholy out of a song as a weasel sucks eggs. Okay, so you've got a lovely simile there. To see no pastime, I, what would you have? I'll stay to know at your abandoned cave. So at the end of the play, when everybody's um, just kicking it and wanting to go back to the court, Duke Frederick's gone, we're going to have a good time, we're going to be lovely people, we'll take this, this idea of forest beauty and loveliness back into the court and it's going to be awesome. Even then Jacques is like, no, I'm going to go and live in a cave, I don't want to belong. And he, he certainly throughout the whole play um, is looking for something and never quite finds it, which, which adds to his sense of not belonging. So hopefully that helps you. Bye.